Hi, I'm John Eastmore from Black Forest, and you're listening to the Jeep Talk Show. You're listening to a 4x4 Radio Network Podcast. Are you ready? It's the Jeep Talk Show with Jeep Mama. Are you sure? Josh. Yeah, I don't think so. And Tony. I think that's a huge deal. So sit back, strap in, and brace yourself. This episode of the Jeep Talk Show is brought to you by Extreme Terrain, title sponsor of Go Topless Day 2019. Stay tuned to later in this episode as we announce their $5,000 Wrangler Parts Giveaway sponsored by Barricade Off-Road. Hey, it doesn't matter if you have a Jeep, want a Jeep, or never driven anything but Jeeps, this show is for you. Josh, Tammy, and myself are here to inform and entertain you while we talk about... Jeeps. <laughs> Jeeps. Wait for it. <laughs> hey, I'm Tony. This. <laughs> hey, I'm Tony. And I'm now an orphan. What? It took 50 years to finally go for adoption. All right. Well, <laughs> holy mackerel. Is it Thursday already? God darn it. If time don't fly. Hey, I'm Josh. And every now and again, the voices in my head, they come out and play. Is it Thursday? I thought it was Friday. Oh, it is Friday. Thursday. It's Monday. Again. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, they're losing their minds, people. Hi, I'm Tammy, and I don't paint the bo- bottom of ammo boxes. Nobody's going to see it. Why does it need to be painted, right? And it only exactly. sticks to things when you do. <laughs> hey, Josh, what's coming up on this episode of the Jeep Talk Show? Well, Tammy, as always, glad you sure asked. We've got Trevor Smith with Atlas46.com. You know, it's that company that makes all those really cool oh tool bags and storage God. solutions and stuff for off-roading. Amazing. This week in Jeep, we're going to hear about the impossible. What this Jeep TJ did across the pond is absolutely incredible. Wait until you hear about what happened. And if you think you still have time to pre-order the new Gladiator pickup from Jeep, well, think again. More details on the first truck debut from Jeep in 30 years. And a Wrangler talk, Tammy's final Wrangler talk ever. She's Aww. going to talk trash about the Cherokee leading her group this last weekend, <laughs> and we'll be getting fired after the show. That's this a shame. Week. <laughs> this week on this week with Nikki G, uh, Nikki G's unsolved mysteries: D ring theft or love lost? Mm, we'll <laughs> oh, find Lord. out. Lord, Lord, and a whole lot more show. So stick around, Tammy. We really enjoyed having you here. So just I know. Th- thank you. And hang with us. Run. Oh, hang hang with us through the rest of the night. <laughs> it was. I'll I'll try not to walk out. Local Jeep news, national Jeep news, and news from around the world. It's this week in Jeep. And this weekend Jeep is, of course, brought to you by Amazon.com. Has spring sprung in your neck of the woods, or maybe you're facing the brunt of a bomb cyclone and need a way to deal with 26 inches of snow in the middle of April. Whatever is going on in your life, Amazon has what you need to make it better. From some killer new shades to that springtime snow shovel, just go to jeeptalkshow.com slash contact and press the big Amazon button there. You'll be taken to the massive land of Amazon online shopping. While there, anything you purchase will give the show a few cents while costing you absolutely nothing more. If you like what you hear or have gotten any benefit from what we do over here, well, then please consider giving back. That's jeeptalkshow.com slash contact. And look for the big Amazon button. Hey, and thanks in advance. Josh, did you say gong cyclone? <laughs> Bomb. <laughs> Start that again. <laughs> <laughs> well, the Glad- Gladiator launch sells out in just 24 hours. Oh, Give geez. the Jeep division of FCA an A plus for its promotion of the new Jeep Gladiator pickup truck, the $61,000 launch edition of the new truck that we reported about last week sold out in just one single day. Less than 24 hours, in fact. If there was any doubt left at FCA about the excitement and demand for this new vehicle, well, I think it's long since been washed away. FCA initiated the promotion for pre-purchase of the launch edition last Thursday online. The resulting rush to order one of the 4,190 specially adorned and equipped trucks nearly crashed the servers dedicated to the website. The web response was so overwhelming, slowing the site down so much, it actually forced FCA to open the offer to telephone callers as well. They had eight different servers going, running that website alone. It still wasn't enough. Over 70,000 people came to the site over the course of, get this, just a couple of hours. 
Yeah, I'd say the demand for the Gladiator is alive and well. We told you last week that the decision to build exactly 4,190 of these, not more, not less, pays homage to the 419 area code for Toledo, Ohio, the location of Jeep's main assembly plant, where the Gladiator is manufactured. The Jeep brand is red hot right now, both globally as well as here in the U.S. It's also FCA's biggest moneymaker and most important asset in a lineup that includes Fiat, Dodge, Chrysler, Alfa Romeo, Maserati, and even Ram trucks. The Gladiator was designed primarily as an extension of Jeep's outdoor and trail-rated models rather than as a direct competitor to mid-sized pickups like Ford's Ranger, Chevy's Colorado, and Toyota's Tacoma. Well, I guess that's just an added bonus now, isn't it? Gladiator's four trims are the Sport starting at $35,000, the Sport S at just over $38,000, the Sport S Overland Edition at just over $40,000, 1000 and the Rubicon model coming in at $45,000. The launch edition is the glitziest Gladiator of all, equipped with either a six-speed manual transmission or an eight-speed automatic, as well as just about every single other tech, goodie, and gadget that Jeep is offering. 27 years have passed since Jeep last sold a truck in the U.S., recently invited journalists to drive the first copies of the Gladiator, and the reviews that I've been reading online have been chock full of positivity and excitement over the model. The official model year is set for a 2020 with promises of models showing up in showrooms as early as this summer. So if you're one of the 4,190 people that got in early enough to order the launch edition, we very, very much want to talk to you to get to your story. So you didn't mention it here. Um, I'm wondering if this has anything to do with my, my stellar idea of making it a, uh, a box launch. Where it comes with a, you know, like a, a deli, a, yeah, it comes with like a deli sandwich. And, and there's some chips. a bologna sandwich in every glove box. I, that could have been the thing that pushed it over. I mean, there's, I mean, if you get food and a truck, it, I'm that pretty would be, sure about the closest thing to food you're going to get out of this Gladiator is going to be some cup holders. But uh, who knows? I, I'm sure the dealerships are going to be offering all kinds of stuff. I, I would guess, I would hazard to guess that for the first two months after buying one of these sixty, whatever it was, one thousand dollar vehicles. Uh, you're probably not going to be eating. So no, nothing but beans and rice for the next three years. Yeah, <laughs> I can't believe that many people have sixty one thousand dollars worth of credit uh, to, oh, to buy I these know. things. Ridiculous. I, I'm I'm sure. I mean, if I, I believe me, I thought about it, but I was like, well, there's no way in hell. I mean, there's, there's just no way. <laughs> what do you so, think? The, what do you think the payment on something like it would be? Probably twelve hundred dollars like, a month or something. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, a, well, I would say nine hundred. Yeah. I was going to say well, well, in excess of of seven or eight hundred dollars. So yeah, I mean, if you got one of those uh, pop up tents to go on it, I guess you could use it as a place to live too, and then then well, it starts exactly. to make sense. <laughs> now, I'd love to talk to somebody that uh, that bought one of these things. We'd love to uh, to talk to you and uh, find out where you got all your money, and if it's illegal, we can just we can. <laughs> Fix your, fix your voice. We'll just beep it out. <laughs> yeah, we can fix your voice so they can't track you. <laughs> Names and voices have been changed to protect the innocent. <laughs> and us. <laughs> well, a rare snowfall paralyzed southern England, and it was no match for a 20-year-old Jeep Wrangler. Damn global warming. <laughs> Pulling a semi-truck out of a snowdrift with your family 4x4 might seem like a tall order, but that's exactly what Mark Bless of St. Austell in Cornwall, UK, was able to do with his 20-year-old Jeep Wrangler TJ, when the region was hit by a rare blizzard earlier this winter. Blessed was cheered on by passerbys and while rescuing a Mercedes-Benz Actros tractor trailer with a shipping container loaded. The truck had become hopelessly stuck in the snow and was blocking the road just as an ambulance with a patient on board was trying to get through. With his Jeep Wrangler, he was able to pull the Mercedes tractor trailer combination out of the snowdrift, just one of several vehicles he ended up rescuing that day. For his good deed and very impressive feat, Blessed received a local Heroes Award from radio station Pirate FM, as well as gifts from Jeep, including a new spare wheel cover. We were inundated with nominations for hundreds of very deserving people in Cornwall, but Mark really stood out as the epitome of a good neighbor, said Pirate FM event coordinator Holly Day. When we heard about Mark's generous actions and the fact that he was able to help clear the road of a 40-ton truck using just his Jeep Wrangler, we were absolutely delighted, Andrew Tracy, marketing manager of Jeep UK, said. Mark fully deserves this recognition, and we were happy to send him some gifts with our good wishes. 
Even moderate snow is not common in the southwest of England, so the sudden six-plus inches of snowfall that hit Cornwall and Devon led to hundreds of vehicles being stranded. While the snowfall may have merely surprised some drivers, heavy trucks faced a much different challenge. Heavy tow trucks were simply overwhelmed in a short period of time trying to rescue all the stranded vehicles. Somehow, my little Jeep managed to tow a 40-ton semi-truck out of the snow and got him back on his way, Blessed said. So many people were standing and cheering. It just goes to show how one little thing you do affects so many different people along the way. I just did a good deed, and I didn't do it to be recognized, he said. Well, I've got a okay. picture in the show notes here for my co-host. <laughs> uh, we're going to try and get this up in the in the notes for this episode at the Jeep Talk Show website. But you guys can see exactly the tractor-trailer combination and the Jeep Wrangler that pulled it out of the snow. I'm sorry, but a tail spare tire cover? It was, it was probably knitted, macrame. <laughs> Oh, I'm like, really? People don't I, use those I, I, anymore. I read that too. I read that too, and I was like, oh, come on, Jeep. You guys could have done better than that. <laughs> I, I, I know. Like, really? I. Uh, How about a new got, JL, or better yet, a Gladiator? <laughs> so when I bought my Jeep, I had one of the dealer on my mm-hmm. spare tire, and I got rid of it. Oh god! So then before I left, so the, then I had to left the So then lot. I had to go back up to. Um, get an oil change because I got like nine free oil changes or whatever. So I go to get my Jeep and I didn't notice it until I got home. They put another one. <laughs> on. You no, seem to have I lost yours. Here you go. Well, so right. if, you, if you do it two more times, Tammy, then the next time you go to change your oil, actually put them on the tires that are on the vehicle right, exactly. and roll up with, the, with those tire covers on. <laughs> I, I suppose you probably told him it was stolen along with your D-ring though, right? <laughs> ha, 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 ha. Sorry. Sorry. That's I couldn't all help I- it. <laughs> That's all I heard all weekend. Everybody <laughs> talks to me about it now. Like, yeah, okay. You're talking about you talking about going to AO AO. It was AOAA you went to, right? Yes. Everybody. <laughs> awesome. Agree. Awesome. I'm Tammy's reputation you. precedes her. It's great. Oh look, Tammy, there's a D ring. I made you look. Uh, <laughs> and, and everyone says it fell off, and I'm like, no, it didn't. <laughs> Telling you, well, Team Tony, if, Team Tony, Team Tony. If you have a news tip or response to any one of our stories, we gotta hear what you have to say. Make sure to let us know by phone or by email. Just head over to jeeptalkshow.com/contact and find out how to reach out to us. Coming up a little bit later in the show, we have an interview with Trevor Smith from Atlas Forty Six. You don't want to miss it. Oh, also coming up uh, later in the show, Tech Talk, uh, Josh will be going over material selection considerations when choosing armor or skid plates for your Jeep. Plastic is probably not on the list. Hmm. Maybe, maybe it will be. <laughs> you never know. You're listening to a 4x4 Radio Network podcast. You know, we're always asking you to go check out the 4x4 Radio Network, and that's a good, for a good reason. There's a ton of great shows there to check out besides ours. And you can tell your friends, too. We've got something for everyone at the 4x4radionetwork.com. How about the On the Trail podcast? And there's Trail Chasers. The Center Steer podcast is a lot of fun, too. And don't forget about Dan at the 4x4 podcast. Lots of great off-road shows. They're free. And it's all at... 4x4radionetwork.com. We'll see you there. You know, you don't have anything, you don't have any excuse not to have something four-wheel drive related to listen to all week long. It's 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 just, it's great. It's wonderful. Check out those other shows. Hey guys, it's Dave from Oregon. I was just listening to um, Jeep Mama's talking about replacing her rear brake pads and someone might have already called in or sent you an email about this, but uh, I've heard it's not uncommon for Wranglers to wear out Pad, rear pads pretty quickly and I believe part of that is the traction control system and the brake lock differential I think is what it's called uh, basically when one tire spins it mimics a locker by uh, or at least a li- 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 limited slip by using the brakes to, to break the tire that doesn't have the traction so the other one gets it and I think just driving around with normal tire spin and those kind of things that the brakes are pretty active on the Wranglers, and so uh, that's my understanding that that's one of the problems. So anyway, just want to give you a heads up about that, and uh, love the show. Thank you. Great information. I didn't even think exactly. about that track, traction control stuff. Yeah, Tammy, do you think that you're? I, I don't know if you've noticed it or not. Since you're sitting in the Jeep, maybe you read uh, in the book about this. Does the traction control work like that on yours, even though you have actual lockers? 
I don't know. Maybe you could find out for us. I, yeah. I'd be real interested to know because I would think that you wouldn't need the traction control if you have the lockers, but maybe they do both. Tammy, I well, can't remember on, on your model, do, do you have a, a, a traction control bypass switch? Can you turn it on and off? Yeah, I can. I've never seen the reason to turn it off. I know some people have, um, but I have felt it like the Jeep taking over control. During well, you're, you'll see stuff. you'll see lights come on in the dash. Uh, typically, yeah. it'll be like the ABS light, or there'll be yep. like a little car symbol with some swervy lines. You know, kind of like a car bacon swerve. You know, yeah, exactly, yeah. car and bacon. <laughs> uh, and th those lights in the dash will usually light up when those systems are active or oh, are yeah. doing something. So, uh, if it happens all the time, you're going to be seeing those lights come on right. quite frequently. If you have that system bypassed or turned off, or um, maybe you just start, you know, drive like grandma with a wedding cake in the back. Um, you'll uh -huh. probably never see those lights come on. No, I've seen them, um, and I you can feel it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I bet you it feels weird. Especially in the wintertime or on slick roads. Hmm. Um, we'll find out so more. Yeah. We'll find but out I'll, more and let I'll you guys look know. into it, definitely. Hey, you ever had the urge to wrap yourself with some Jeep Talk Show merch? Well, now oh, you can. Yeah. <laughs> Head over to jeeptalkshow.com slash store, and you'll find T-shirts, iPhone, Android, Android cases, and all sorts of stuff. Uh, and it's all sporting the official Jeep Talk Show logo. If you get some JTS goodies, be sure and share a picture on social media. We'd love to use, see you sporting our goods. Shut up and listen. Shut up. Shut up. So shut up. You don't shut Man, up. Shut up, Shane. Hey. <laughs> shut up and listen. It's time for Wrangler talk. It's time for G Mama. So this past weekend, I went to AOAA, which is Anthracite Outdoor Adventure Area. It's about 30 miles north of Roush Creek. And I went to meet up with the Jeep enthusiasts of Eastern PA. Um, we interviewed uh, Terry uh, a couple episodes back, and they mentioned their April 6th run um, to help somebody with cancer. And I'm like, oh, you know, I'm going to go up there. Um, I brought my friend who bought that LJ, and we were like, yes, we're going to go hit some rocks. And did a little primitive camping in a tent. Um, I can check off cold weather camping. Um, it was like in the 30s. Um, That's so a merit anyway, badge, right? Pardon? That's a merit badge, right? Yeah, it is. <laughs> I sh should have got a badge. Um, so, And I will be having a video on April 21st on my top five must-have items to take with you when you're primitive camping in a tent. Um, anyway, so we get up there, and I'm all excited. I'm, like, looking for Terry, and he's in California. So I did meet... Um, Brandon, right? Now I'm got, now I'm gonna totally forgot their names. Brandon and Bill, and they both were in my group. I picked the green blue group. So um, Bill was in a Cherokee, and it was a lifted Cherokee. It looked really nice. It was not red. Um, so you know we're on the trails. It's super muddy. Um, my friend I was with kept telling him, "Go through the mud. Go through the water." Tammy hates it. <laughs> My Jeep was, had, it looked like, you know, when you get those um, textured ceilings, um, that's what my Jeep looked like. It looked like somebody had textured it with mud. Anyway, so we get to this one spot and it's this huge mud puddle. And so the Cherokee goes through it. There's a video on YouTube. Um, you can see it um, on my YouTube channel. Um, LJ and Cherokee go through mud puddle and the Cherokee breaks. Now the Cherokee was our trail guide. So the Cherokee's going through this mud puddle and all of a sudden it just stops and it's still, the engine's still whining. You can hear it in the video. Um, he broke his, um, I thought at first it was the front drive shaft, but now I think it was the back drive shaft. And so my friend I was with said, Hey, I'll make sure he gets back to the parking lot. Tammy, you take the rest of these guys and continue with the trail ride. And I'm like, no, I don't know where I'm going. So after some convincing, I did. Anyway, so 
um, after the whole trail ride, the Cherokee was back in the parking lot, and there's a picture on um, social media of me underneath the Cherokee because I was helping him fix the Cherokee, and I saved the day. Um, and Tony, go ahead. You can give me grief. Yeah, I just had a question. That wasn't one of those uh, those models that you know where they take the picture where they're working on vehicles because I've never <laughs> seen anybody fix a uh, fix anything under a car laying on their belly. It's always on their back. Well, so I kind of tricked you a little. I was I w- actually I learned so much. I was under there recording sound, which we can play here in a minute. Ah, that makes yeah, sense. So, but how I saved the day, I did save the day because I took over the trail guide, um, the trail guiding duties. And I did such a great job because one of the other um, co-presidents, I think they're called, um, was in the group. And I did such a great job. They have asked me to come back and do a women's trail event in September because I was so amazing. I, I was just going to say, was this something that, you know, that you were patting yourself on the back or you actually had somebody else tell you you were doing a great job? Because that's no, important. The, somebody else did. Brandon with the Jeep Enthusiast, he said, would you come back and run an event for us? Because like I said, you know, Tony, I'm kind of a big deal. Um, anyway, <laughs> she stole that from you, Josh. She I flat know. ass stole I that know. from you. <laughs> and I have a, I even bought the shirt for that. But anyway, so the Cherokee broke um, the drive shaft, and I got under because he had to fix it to get back home. Um, my friend in the other Jeep took him to the auto parts store. They got, um, they look like bottle caps. That's the shape of them. He just cracked those it was um the u-joint part of the yeah anyway so he's under the jeep fixing it and i'm like i'm gonna go watch him so i get under the jeep and i start recording sound and you can roll that audio now tony what are you doing currently i am putting a new u-joint in the rear drive shaft because with 35 inch tires It does not necessarily like to be in two-wheel drive going through a mud pit. No. Lots of fun, though. But this is totally different setup than a Wrangler, right? Yes. Because you're in a Cherokee. Correct. I am. And also, Wranglers have a Rapunzel U-joint, which is... They don't use the standard yokes like any other vehicle. And they're a whole lot harder to service. So those little silver caps are what you busted, right? Yes, these right here. They, internally they have um, needle bearings, which are along, they're like little rods that are perpendicular or parallel to the U-joint. And they are, they allow it to rotate as the drive shaft sp- spins uh-huh. around. You know, I don't think Tony has ever broken this on his Cherokee. You know why? Because <laughs> he doesn't go through mud pits in two-wheel drive. <laughs> well, because he doesn't go in mud pits at all. Right, Tony? Is this the stock drive shaft? No, it's an aftermarket. Which which one is it? Um, I think it's Tom Woods. Yep, that's what I have. Mine looks way different than yours, though. Okay, so this is the last thing that you did to your Jeep. What were the other things? Because you so, had to borrow my super duty or my super heavy du- heavy duty zip tie. Zip tie, yeah. Because my rear shock absorber came off the bushing, as you can kind of. It's still very. The bushing's very um, broken at the point. Of current very state. broken. <laughs> and also, make sure your battery terminals are. Tight, tight, clean, and there's no frayed wires. So, how do you know if it has frayed wires? What happened? You can just look at it and oh, see. But did something because, happen while you were driving, or did you um, just happen to look? As you're driving and you lose power, oh. <laughs> your negative or positive comes off the terminal, and the whole entire wire pulls out of where it goes, connects to the battery. So one last question. Yes. Did any of the Wranglers break while we were on the trails? Not that I know of. Okay. So the one Cherokee breaks. Yes. 
Three times. Three, Three times. times. I made up for everybody else. And I want to tell everyone that was a red Cherokee, but I would be lying. It's it's a teal blue teal two blue, door yeah. Cherokee yeah. from 1998. So, uh, how old is your uh, your Wrangler, Tammy? Uh, four four years, five and, years. And how old? Years. And how old was uh, his uh, XJ? Uh, almost 20, 20 years old. Yep, twenty years old. He, and he wheels it a lot harder than I do. That's for sure. So the, um, you got to keep those things in mind. But no, uh, no. the uh, I was curious. Do you, I don't know if you if you saw if you if you saw this if you would under, know what I what I was talking about. But you can put U bolts on the the yoke instead of just the straps that comes on there. And the strap just look is just like that. It just has a little strap that goes around those caps. Did you notice if it was a strap or an actual U it bolt? Was, it was the it was the U bolt. Oh, good. So I'm I'm wondering, Josh. I wonder what happened with uh, with that cap cracking like that. I wonder if he uh, uh, tightened the uh, the U bolts down too too tight. Uh, who knows? I mean, it could have been just a, something as simple as uh, you know a larger rock hiding in that mud puddle than what he thought, and and just the you know suspension sort of getting bound up and and oh. throwing all of that force down into the drive line. I mean, uh, really, who knows? I don't know how fast he was going. I don't know you know trail conditions. Uh, maybe that drive that uh, that U joint has been going out for a while. Oh, maybe, you know, I don't know. Maybe yeah, it you know wasn't it was, a, right. a, a maybe it wasn't a uh, um, a Tom Woods Gold U joint. You know, who knows? Right. Um, so it's, there, there's just too many factors there. Now, there's one thing I got to point out though. It's Rezepa, not Rapunzel. Yes. Rapunzel. Yes. <laughs> well, I, I know. thought I was trying to think of another pull my hair joke whenever he said right. Rapunzel. Oh, <laughs> no, it, yeah, it was Rezepa. Cause I remember talking about that when I got my drive shaft. Well, that's, uh, yeah, it's yeah. not a Rezepa on the TJs. It's, it's no. just a really short drive shaft. I mean, I think right. I, good Lord, I've never seen a drive shaft that short. Uh, but it's it's the same as far as I could as far as I remember. I've only seen it a few times uh, underneath the, the TJ. Uh, it, it's the same exact thing as the XJ. It's just a really right. short drive shaft. So there was an incorrect statement in there. Yes, the Wrangler and the Cherokee do have similar drivetrains, but it all depends on the year. Oh yeah. Once you get into the JKs, then they go to the Recepa joints versus the U joints, and that it's a different ball game. And you don't yeah. have a Recepa uh, U joint on yours anymore, do you, Tammy? You have a no. standard U uh, joint uh, set up, and that was your front uh, drive shaft that had to be replaced. Um. Yeah, it wasn't totally gone yet. No, it was starting to leak. But it though. was starting to leak. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, and, and, and to your credit, you're staying on top of these things, which is what uh, kind of uh, seems to, to bite people on the ass whenever they're out on the trail. If you don't, if you don't stay ahead of these things, you, oh, I can make it one more ride. I can make it one more ride. And, right. then, and then you don't. <laughs> well, and I, that's why I changed my brakes right before I left. I mean, I could have maybe, you know, they were really down. Jeff said maybe I had another couple thousand miles on them, but I just, I didn't want to take the chance. Right. Because, you know, that just ruins everybody's fun. But, you know, one thing I learned about this trail ride is I'm very, um, I like to plan everything. I like to have an itinerary and I got to get everything done. And ever since I got my Jeep, it's like, I try not to go out with too many expectations because all it does is disappoint you. And I really, really wanted to get on the rocks. I really wanted my friend to get his LJ on the rocks and... You know, we didn't get to do that because we were first we were going through all the mud and then the the Jeep broke and the other people in my group were like, We just want to stay on green trails and I so I have to look at the positive of this. I got seat time trail guiding. I had to follow Maprika. I was on trails that I've never been on and I got everyone through. Um, I there was one I'm editing a, was editing a video today. There was one spot where I'm like, oh my god, I I can't go in this water, but I had to. I had to, you know, take my time and go through this big water. I thought I was gonna sink my jeep, but I didn't. Um, so you know, every time you go out on the trails, you never know what's gonna happen, and you just have to have that mindset, and you have to adapt, and you have to just you know go with the flow and. I got to trail guide and I did really good and they want me to come back. So, you know, it's a positive. And overall, I was out in nature. I was camping. I met some really cool people that camped next to us. So it's always a good time no matter what. 
Now, Tammy, I thought that you you did some trail leading uh, like last year's Women's Wheeling Day or something. I, I could have sworn this wasn't your first rodeo. Oh, no, I you're correct. Um, I was the the gunner last year, women, women's wheeling, and then we got turned around, and I ended up having to trail guide some of that trail. And then last February, or this past February, uh, Montgomery County Jeepers of Maryland... Um, I went wheeling with them, and they said, you're guiding. And that's when <laughs> I was in the snow, and I got turned around. And I mean, but it was all good. So this was actually my second time, well, kind of third time um, trail guiding. So, And they want me to trail guide at this year's Women's Wheeling, where I am the actual guide. So I'm wow. very confident in myself to be able to do greens and blue trails that I've been on. Um I just need to get a winch, I guess, huh? If you're going to trail guide, you should have a winch. Somebody's got to have one. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's the only danger, I think, is that if you, uh, as, as long as somebody in the, the somebody in the, the, the team, the group that you're with has a winch, you should be okay. Uh, perhaps two of them in, in some certain situations. But yeah, if, right. you, if you had one, then you wouldn't have to you know, make sure somebody else had one. I saw a JKU in traffic uh, last week, week before, something like that, that had a uh, a recessed winch both in the front and the rear. Wow. Now, I've seen I've seen setups where guys can move their their winch from the front to the rear, but this guy had a recessed winch behind the bumper in the rear, and it was an aftermarket bumper. It was clearly not something that was you know tacked together in the in the backyard with Bubba. Uh, it, it, this was a, a piece of aftermarket gear that was, you know, probably in excess of fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars, judging by the look wow. at it. And he had a front bumper that matched. They both had worn winches on. I mean, this this guy probably had more money to, I mean, than you know what to do with. So, I mean, it's clear that somebody had a lot of disposable income. But yeah, I mean, just having that winch in the front and the back is is something that you know. I think a lot of wheelers always kind of dream about yeah. being able to, you know, have something in the front and the back ready to go, moment's notice, doesn't matter which way you're pointing, doesn't matter who's in front or, be- or behind you, you can recover or be recovered. And and this guy was certainly set up for that. So uh, don't see that too often. No, that's that's quite of an expense. And uh, you, I think really for the hardcore, I mean, there's a lot of things you can do with a winch on the front of your Jeep that uh, uh, doesn't even, you can, it, I guess what I'm trying to say is, is that you can use it for a lot of things that doesn't require you to be off-road. That's right. uh, and, and uh, but if you do in front and rear, you're pretty much an off road person, or or you want to be. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> so another little tidbit I'd like to share is, you know, going back to I'm kind of a big deal. Um, as I'm in the parking lot, some guy comes up to me and he's like, "Oh, I've always wanted to see a Jeep that's been on YouTube before," and he watches, <laughs> wow. my, yeah, my YouTube videos, and then. The Muddy Microphone, which is the Muddy Microphone podcast guy, mm-hmm. was yeah. there and introduced himself to oh, me. Oh, how so, nice. Yeah, so that was pretty cool. So it's always nice to run into people who either listen to the Jeep Talk Show or you know know me from YouTube. Um, so that's that's always fun to meet these people in person. Well, you know, I, I'll talking about a big deal, I, uh, I'll share this with you. It's not in the notes. I was uh, leaving Sam's Club the other day. I had to stop and get some gas because my, my Jeep is uh, my 20 year old Jeep is my daily driver as well. And uh, I, I got that big, huge uh, Jeep Talk Show sticker on my Jeep. Mm-hmm. And I'm I'm walking out uh, to out of Sam's uh, with uh, with the groceries and walking up to the uh, the Cherokee and a uh, guy getting out of a a, a Toyota truck and uh, he's looking at the sign and he sees me walking up to the Jeep and uh, and he goes I- is this your Jeep and I say yeah he goes you you're uh, you parked a little close to my Toyota please don't do that again oh <laughs> <laughs> so there's that. I can put that on my resume. There you go. (laughs) Got that going for you. (laughs) And I have a big deal. Yeah. I'm supposed to mention what's coming up later in the show, but I I have a feeling I don't want to (laughs) hear what Nikki G has to say. I'm kind of nervous. Oh, come on. You can't dish it out if you can't take it. Yeah. And going back to um, being there, you do not know how many people were giving me grief about my D-ring. (laughs) <laughs> just random people they must listen to the show and they were saying nope it fell off i'm waiting for somebody to present you with a, a nice 
plaque with a nice mounted red D ring on it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I no. found this on the freeway and I've been saving yeah. it for years just for you. <laughs> no, no, no. Maybe a two two D ring uh, formation on the plaque and there's one just an outline, a, a chalk outline for the second one for the, like the missing D ring <laughs> formation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody needs to Photoshop that. <laughs> yep. Crime scene tape, you know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm from CSI. I'm here to to check your D ring. <laughs> so yeah, we, up, we've been getting. Nikki G. Go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say, coming up, Nikki G will be sharing something. <laughs> Lost loves. Yes. Over the last uh, couple few weeks, we've been getting a lot of interaction with the show, a lot more than we normally do. So we got to say thank you to our listeners out there who uh, regularly and for the first time interact with the show we love hearing from you guys so much uh, fun. even if it's even if it's just a pat on the back or to you know hear what's going on with your jeep and we always say everybody's got a jeep story to tell and we want to hear yours um well, we have ken who wrote into the show this last week he says your show makes frequent commute through chicago much more enjoyable you do a great job with the show and your interviews thank you and big exclamation point and all caps and all that sort of stuff so ken thank you for taking the time to re- write to the show reach out Say hi and all that sort of stuff. Ken also um, uh, put in a request for some stickers. Tony, I don't know if you got a chance to uh, get that address out to him yet, but Ken also had some ideas for some interviews. We might be able to get those out onto the show here in the coming weeks or months. So, uh, Ken, thanks again for that. Hey, guys. It's FM Duper again. Um, just listening to the show. Um, I heard a comment about uh, Renegades or the, the new Renegades of the BU platform. Um I actually wheeled with one last week. Uh, yeah, it took a little extra, a little extra manpower to get them through some obstacles, but surprisingly, you know, it was a trailhawk edition. It did surprisingly well. Um, I actually have a video of it up on my uh, YouTube channel. Um, but uh, it's, uh, it's, you know, out of the box. It's not a bad rig. I mean, I wouldn't go rock climbing with it, but I mean, it is quote unquote trail rated, and it got through uh, the little backwoods trail we were doing uh, last weekend so uh get a chance to take a look it's uh it's it's interesting but uh, overall you know it's still a jeep one way or another um well that's all i got for you this week uh talk to you soon have a good week yeah there's a lot of uh off-road four-wheel drive all-wheel vehicles that uh, that do you know okay off-road and uh i mean subaru is very well known for uh like a, a car car-ish platform that's able to do very well off road, and I'm and, and I've always said it's it's not. I don't have an issue with the Renegade specifically. I'm just kind of concerned that the people that want to get a Jeep and they they think of a Wrangler, but they don't want to get a Wrangler. They want to get this this uh, as Josh always puts it, the cute Ute. Uh, that they're that it's it's a very different animal than say a Wrangler or the old Cherokees or the TJs or the YJs or the CJs or the military Jeeps. It's, it's very much a different animal. So I, I was always concerned that if it had a Jeep logo on it, it carried that same weight as these other off-road vehicles. And in my opinion, it doesn't. I don't think you're going to see these things in 20 years breaking U-joints on the trail. I'm not quite <laughs> sure they have U-joints. No, I mean, now the the, the, the Trackhawk, or not the track, I, trail. Well, the Trackhawk, the Trackhawk's a cool uh, rig as well, but the the Trailhawk uh, versions of, of these rigs, um, they, they Jeep did what they could to address the fact that, okay, this is Jeep, but it's not a Wrangler, you know? So it's okay. You, you want off road, you can't afford the Wrangler, you get this. So here's a package that will get you somewhere in between. And there is uh, early on in the, um, in the early days of the marketing of, of the, uh, of, of the Renegade, I mean, they were putting out videos of these things doing a whitewater rafting course backwards while there's water flowing through it. Um, how one of these things, bone stock, went through the Rubicon. And, I mean, it was I mean, world-class wheeling terrain here, and a Jeep Renegade was able to navigate it. Yeah, it had a lot of three-wheel motion going on, had a lot of this tire up in the air, and not a lot of articulation going on. After all, it is more or less a car. After all, it is built on the Fiat 500L platform. So, you know, you do get what you get. It's not an off-road vehicle, but they, with the, the Trailhawk uh, package, you, they did try to address some of that, a little bit more wheel clearance, a little bit more aggressive tires, a little bit larger tires. You get some, uh, you know, you get the, uh, the, the driveline uh, locked up, disconnect, and, and you even get some armor and stuff underneath as well. It's not a Wrangler, but it's close. 
Yeah, and there's nothing wrong with anybody having one or wanting it instead. This as long as you understand what you're buying. There you go. So it's not in the show notes, but I wanted to take a moment here and uh, uh, make uh, make you aware, and uh, Josh and Tammy are already aware of this. Um, my uh, my mom uh, came to live with us uh, here at the uh, the Mokoroi household uh, a little over two years ago. Uh, at the time, I believe she was uh, 94 years old and still living uh, at, at the, the home that I grew up in uh, by herself. And uh, she was uh, not feeling very well. And my wife uh, reached out to her and said, you know, you just need to come stay with us. And uh, she was able to, to nurse her back to health, uh, which, frankly, we didn't wasn't quite sure that was going to happen. She was very sick uh, with uh, pneumonia, I believe. And uh, over the two years, she's been living here uh, with us, and uh, she passed away yesterday. And I, I just wanted to, I, I, I don't ever like having a negative on the show, but out of respect to her and uh, her long life and, uh, you know, her being my mom, I just wanted to, to make the announcement. Uh, she uh, never had cancer. <laughs> she had never had any long stays uh, in the hospital, uh, a prolonged illness, and uh, she passed away in her sleep. And uh, the my my daughters and my uh, wife are you know quite upset about all this, and I, I told them I I said you got to look at the positive side of this, uh, exactly what I just said it it, it it it's it wasn't a bad life. Now she bitched a lot about it, <laughs> but she she didn't have uh, have to go through a lot of these things that a lot of people do. And at ninety six years old to to pass away in your sleep, I mean. I, I look forward to both those things. Uh, I, you know, definitely just going to sleep and waking up someplace else. Well, and living to ninety six. I mean, good lord, that's some longevity. So you got that to look forward to. I mean, that's that's an amazing time to be to be on this planet. Ninety four, ninety ninety four plus years. Good lord. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, just wanted to mention that uh, everything's good. Uh, I'm uh, I'm very much a firm believer that. Uh, uh, we move, we go on to someplace else, and uh, she has, and I'm sure she's uh, she's having the most interesting time in her life. I'm just hoping she's not uh, or afterlife. I'm just hoping she's not bitching about it there. <laughs> I, I think she's she's driving around in a black jeep right now, Tony. Uh, <laughs> well, that's probably just for a while until she burns off some of those sins, and then she can move up to a red jeep. Uh, yeah, uh, mm-hmm. that, there we go. <laughs> and it's probably a Cherokee as well. Hey, if you haven't heard, we're giving away stickers. All you have to do is send us a self-addressed stamped envelope, or S-A-S-E. To find out where to send it, head over to jeeptalkshow.com slash contact. You'll see how to contact us there, a n- number of ways to contact us there, and we'll respond with the mailing address where to send your S-A-S-E. Uh, uh, and this may be the last time I'm reading any of this uh, for the foreseeable future because we're getting low on stickers. We've had quite a bit of a demand, but... Uh, uh-huh. So this limited time thing is is really just the, just that, uh, and for a limited limited time, you can be a JTS ambassador. You'll get more stickers and some JTS cards, and now you can leave that sticker or card under the uh, windshield wiper of your favorite Hearst to go along with my uh, prior announcement. So just reach out, and uh, we can get those stickers out to you very 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 quickly. Hey guys, just wanted to say thank you really so much from the bottom of my heart. Uh, I'm the webmaster for the Chief of Palooza, B.C. I'm a nonprofit organization for the Raise Money and Camps for Cancer up here in uh, in Canada. And uh, thank you very, very much for mentioning uh, the event, uh, which is now sold out and uh, no sign of slowing down. So hopefully a lot of people know about it by next year. A few years ago, I lost my father to brain cancer, and our good friend of ours just uh, passed away, leaving five children. So now more than ever, we're devoted to, to making making uh make money to, to help fight cancer for everybody i'm going to send in a, an envelope to hopefully be a cheap talk show ambassador and uh, hopefully get some stickers so i can pass out information uh at the at the event itself since i'm the, the master of ceremonies i want to make a mention and pass out some information and get everybody to be on board with your show because you guys do such an amazing job and i uh, absolutely love it work night shifts and every friday night i look forward to Listening to the to the podcast in that truck at Brayton's uh, in a week, and I've learned so much information. And uh, now I follow uh, Jeep Mama online as well. So once again, Yay. thank you very much, guys, for making mention it. I really, really appreciate it, and uh, I look forward to many years of listening to your show. Thanks, guys. Such kind words. <laughs> 
I know. It's so I think awesome to hear my that. My favorite voicemail of the year so far. <laughs> I know. <laughs> awesome. Hey. <laughs> oh, you know what? I uh, you know, Tammy mentions uh, occasionally about her YouTube uh, channel. We we are three uh, subscribers away from having a thousand uh, subscribers on the, oh, wow. on the channel. And you know, we used to push that a lot, and then we just said, "Screw it." <laughs> <laughs> but well, we we're, were doing we were doing live video for a while there. We yeah. were posting video of us doing the show and everything. I mean, and we we tried our our, our hardest to in- incorporate as much you know live action into the show and and, and getting the audience involved and stuff as well. And and it just never really quite got the traction. Never could eh, get the locker installed in the YouTube channel. You know? and so we got the <laughs> got the one wheelie peely going on. So it can't quite get anywhere. Yeah, I mean, how much fun can you have looking at uh, three talking heads that uh, talk for two hours? So uh, it's it's certainly understandable. But uh, getting close to that one thousand that we were trying for, uh, gosh, what a couple of years ago now. You got tech questions? Ah, oh, what do I ever? have answers oh that's good because it's tech talk with jeep talk last week we started talking about the technical aspects of picking out accessories or mods for your jeep drawing attention to the more technical considerations versus just buying what everybody else is buying and i started last week's segment with a focus on one of the most critical points of protection for your off-road rig and that's rocker protection or rock rails or rock sliders, whatever you want to call them. If you plan on go, going off-roading regularly, well, rock rails are a good idea. If you are planning on going rock crawling, well, they are an essential must-have. We're going to shift our focus from the sides of the Jeep to the next most critical aspect of protecting the Jeep, and that's skid plates, or armor. Skid plates, just like rock sliders, are designed to protect your investment, your Jeep. Off-roading should be a time for adventure and exploration, not worry and doubt. So, outfitting your Jeep with the right protection in the right places will ensure a safe and successful journey. Over the next few episodes, I'm going to try and explain the benefits of armor and skid plates and the level of protection they offer and the type of terrain they should be used in. Now, you may be asking yourself at this point, Self, do I really need armor and skid plates? And if your self answers you, push pause and take your medication. In all seriousness, skid plates are a necessity for anybody who takes a Jeep off-road on anything more than a graded, graded gravel logging road. Skid plates are a heavy-duty steel armor that typically bolts directly to the vehicle to protect important components from harm. Seems simple enough, so where does the tech side of all this come into play? Well, moving from more of a budgetary mindset to one of weight and how and where to distribute said weight, you you might elect to start with a more specific level of protection and build up as you need and as your skill level and trail difficulty increases as well. Now, most Jeeps are designed and made for off-roading. Some even come from the factory with some form of skid plates already installed. Not all, but some. And while off-roading, you may encounter the unexpected like shifting rocks, mud, down trees, or other hazards that have the potential to damage your vehicle's critical components even beyond what the factory protection can provide. In order to prevent injury to these components like the steering box, gas tank, oil pan, transmission, and transfer case, well, you're going to need skid plates. There is a massive variety of different skid plates available to protect your Jeep, so you can tackle whatever obstacles lie ahead with the peace of mind that you'll be able to drive home scratch-free or relatively scratch-free. Now, I could spend 20 or 30 minutes just going over each and every skid plate available to you and your Jeep, but we don't have that kind of time, and I'm pretty sure you don't have that kind of patience. So I'm going to be breaking the rest of our discussion about skid plates and armor into multiple parts. Today, though, before we go over options, mounting styles, and the pros and cons of this skid plate or that, I want to talk a little bit about one major factor most people don't think twice about, and that is what material those skid plates or armor should be made out of. And yes, there are multiple options. For Jeep owners that use their rig as a daily driver, aluminum can be a great choice. Due to it weighing less than steel, a vehicle with aluminum body gear will have a better fuel economy and handling. Aluminum is also, a, is also great for daily drivers, especially in the north due to the use of road salt because aluminum's ability to avoid rusting. For Jeeps that are used primarily off-road, steel can be a great choice due to its superior strength and lower cost than aluminum. Steel is, very strong, is a very strong metal that is also relatively inexpensive. This makes it popular for suspension parts, skid plates, skid plates and body armor. Another benefit of steel is that it is able to be easily repaired unlike aluminum. The main drawbacks to steel armor and skid plates are that they're, well, they're going to rust a little easier and the extra weight can add up quickly. By adding large amounts of weight to your Jeep by adding a bunch of aftermarket armor and skid plates and stuff, well, you can change your center of gravity some. 
This can affect handling and increase chances of your rig rolling over in those extreme off-camber situations if that weight is biased too high up on the vehicle. Weight distribution is something Jeepers rarely think of, so when it comes time to armor up your Jeep, well, keep in mind where that weight is going to end up. Our aluminum is amazing metal. It's already used in many areas of the automotive field, ranging from body panels to engine blocks. But one of aluminum's largest benefits is it's incredibly light compared to steel. This allows you to keep your Wrangler's weight down, which will help avoid any negative impacts to your handling or fuel economy. Generally, steel weighs about three times as much as aluminum. However, many things can affect this, including thickness, type of aluminum, the manufacturer, etc. Aluminum is not as strong as steel, but because of its light weight, you can use more of it to increase the strength, all while keeping it lighter than the same part made in steel. The downside to aluminum? Well, it typically costs more than steel and is a lot easier to damage, well, mainly because it's a softer metal. Although huge advantage, another huge advantage aluminum has over steel is it doesn't rust. However, it does oxidize. The main difference is rust on steel will act more like a cancer and continue to spread, causing more damage unless all present rust is removed and the surface is coated with paint or some other form of protective coating. Aluminum, on the other hand, will begin to oxidize after its coating wears away or deteriorates. After this happens, it is protected from further damage by its own powdery oxidation. The oxidation will act as a protective layer that will guard against most forms of corrosion. The only real problem with oxidation is it makes aluminum look dull. However, with proper care and maintenance, oxidation and corrosion can be avoided in most situations. But seriously, who needs a spit shine skid plate under their Jeep? Now, if you're looking for light protection against the lightest of scrapes or scratches, plastic might actually be a good choice of material for your body armor. I know, a lot of you out there are probably scoffing at me right at this moment. But plastic is a great choice if you don't want a heavy material that you have to drill into the body to install. And or if you don't have a, a whole lot of, you know, rough obstacles that you're going to be facing. Most plastic body armor can be installed using just double-sided tape to provide a strong bond that won't damage your Jeep's paint. Plastic, however, well, it's not very strong. And it won't protect against much of anything, really, other than small road debris, sand, and the occasional thin branch or twig poking out onto the trail. Really? And that's about it. Next week, grass. we're going to get a little more specific about, yeah, or grass. And next week, we're going to get a little more specific about skid plates and armor and more things to consider while shopping. Skid plates are a good thing, generally. You I know, mean, uh, even, even for on-road vehicles, I think it's a good thing. So I was, um, I kind of lost you for a minute. I had some technical issues here, Josh. But um, I was just reading through your things. You did mention weight, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's one okay. of the big things we're talking about here was, okay. uh, yeah. was weight and the differences between steel and aluminum. Yeah, because that's one thing I took into consideration when I was getting my oil pan skid plate, you know. And a then, lot of people, go ahead. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to oh, interrupt no. you. No, I was going to say, and then you, you know, you have to look into because um, isn't aluminum's more bendable, right? It's right, more, aluminum is a much softer metal, and so the scratches right. and gouges are going to be a little bit deeper. It can deform a lot easier, uh, or or further. Uh, deformed than, than what steel can and steel or aluminum rather doesn't have a memory like steel does so right. it's like like aluminum rims or um, aluminum uh, body panels uh, armor or skid plates whatever if you come down on a rock really hard and you put a dent into that aluminum it's not going to be able to be repaired it's dented and that, and that's just that's it that's the way right. it's going to be in the same in the same exact situation all things the same but dealing with steel Steel can be bent back into shape. It has a memory it can it can revert to. Now it's not like pushing a button and restarting. It's it's not exactly that simple. But you ask any like a wheel repair specialist, and they'll tell you the exact same thing. Aluminum, you have to rebuild. You can't repair. And that's um, talking about the wheels. That's why when um, I was getting my thirty fives, and he asked, "What kind of wheels do you want?" And I'm like, "Oh, I don't know." And he was explaining that to me, so I went with steel rims. Yeah, it's a good um, choice, especially if you're going to be yeah. doing any sort of uh, serious wheeling, getting into the rocks, right. that sort of stuff. Now, if you're just going after aesthetics, you're going after looks and stuff like that, well, then aluminum can fit the bill. Because I've got so much road rash uh, or rock rash on those wheels, it's not even funny. Well, anything to add? Maybe you have a question for Tech Talk yourself. Just jump over to jeeptalkshow.com slash contact and send us a message. Okay. Time out, Jeeper. Serious question right here, right now. If somebody just happened to give you $5,000 right now, just for some Wrangler mods, what would you spend it on? Would it be a lift kit, some wheels and tires, 
a really cool trail machete, <laughs> about a 55 gallon drum of blinker fluid. Eh, who uses turn signals that much anyways, right? Well, our April sponsor, Extreme Terrain, has teamed up with Barricade Off-Road to award one lucky winner a $5,000 shopping spree on ExtremeTerrain.com. Even though Barricade is known for their rugged armor and exterior styling for Wranglers and trucks, the $5,000 winner can spend those winnings on just about any product or brand on Extreme Terrain's site. From addictive desert designs to zone off-road, the best part about the Barricade Off-Road 5K giveaway on XT, there's no purchase necessary. And you can enter every single day for your best shot of taking home the big bucks. In Wrangler Mods, well, in Wrangler Mods, that is. Head on over to today's show notes at jeeptalkshow.com and click the sweepstakes link and enter to win every single day until June 30th for your chances to win. Take home the goods from our friends at Extreme Terrain and Barricade Off-Road. Advanced Adapters, this is Clyde. How can I help you? Clyde, buddy! It's Tony from the Jeep Talk Show. Yes, sir. How can I help you? Come on, Clyde. You remember me. I, I called you a few weeks ago. Last week. Oh, really? It seems like two, but at least you do remember. Your transfer case is still being built, Mr. McLeroy. Clyde, call me Tony! Clyde? Yes, Tony. Was there something else that I can help you with other than telling you that your Atlas 2 speed is still on schedule for the five to six weeks that it takes to build. Come on, Clyde, buddy. We're old friends at this point. And after all, I do have my own show. Tony, it's a podcast. Everyone has a podcast. We are giving the same excellent customer service we're known for, the same customer service we give everyone. Well, okay, but you can't blame a guy for trying. By the way, uh, how'd you like the show? Have you been binge listening? I'm sorry, Mr. McLeroy. Tony. Uh, Tony, I have another call coming in. Please check back with us anytime except if it has to do with the Atlas being available sooner. We will contact you if the due date changes. Oh, so the due date could change? Could it be sooner? No, not really. Look, it's just something we tell people, okay? I'm sorry, I have to go. Uh, okay, well, thanks. Hello, this is Carl from New Jersey. But well, thank uh, the Jeep Talk Show and XG Cargo for... Winning the uh, Magellan bags, and when I receive them, I will make sure you get pictures of it installed and of review. Thank you very much. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> yeah, looking forward to those pictures. Yeah, definitely. I love pictures. From around the world. <laughs> or from your city. And sometimes just down the street. How to neighbor. It's the Jeep Talk Show interview. All right, boys and girls, we're back here for another Jeep Talk Show interview. This week, we're going to be talking to Trevor. He is the director of off-road gear for Atlas 46 and has worked for Atlas for about three years now. Now, you can see all the goodies uh, at Atlas 46 uh, over at atlas46.com. And uh, as you're typing and uh, going over to atlas46.com, Tammy is also typing and going over to atlas46.com. Yes. Did you remember your, your credit card, uh, Tammy, or do you need to leave and go get that? No, I don't have it. <laughs> Thank goodness. Uh, well, if, maybe if, you'll pay if, attention to the interview. <laughs> well, since you won't get, let me get a word in edgewise, I'll just go well, you, get it. You have something do to interview. do, don't you? Hey, Trevor, thanks a lot for being with us. And if you don't know, uh, Tammy likes to shop during the interviews. Sounds good. <laughs> yeah, I'm shopping right now. Ooh. Yeah, there's a lot of cool stuff on there. Uh, I was checking it out uh, again uh, right before the uh, before the interview. Uh, Trevor, tell us a little bit about something about Atlas 46. You've you've been with them for three years now. Uh, how how'd all that happen? How'd you get started with them? Well, I found them on Facebook, and they shared this really really slick uh, tool roll that I really liked that I wanted to buy to add to my Jeep, but I was in between paychecks and Stuff like that. And then one day they posted that they were looking for uh, a person for customer service. And they just so happened to be in my neck of the woods. So I applied. I started working there. And then I eventually moved over to the marketing team. And then eventually, uh, to my passion with off-road gear, um, took over the off-road gear line, kind of launched that. And it's kind of been history ever since. Uh, but we manufacture all sorts of soft goods. We're very heavy in the carpentry and the trade world, um, but my doing is pretty much anything with wheels, 
Uh, today we actually just released our firefighter line. Uh, I know firefighters don't have wheels, but fire trucks do, so it got pushed onto my plate. It's been a really, really fun. That's, uh, that's called one of those leaping monkeys. Like, it's got wheels, and then, yeah, give it to Trevor. Yep. <laughs> Pretty much how it happens. <laughs> so, do, do they give you a hard time about how uh, how they should uh, not have a Facebook presence because that's how we got Trevor? They, they give you that crap at, at the office? <laughs> yeah, so for a while there, I was running the Facebook, and I was... I was doing the Instagram and with two of my coworkers and finally we grew a little bit bigger. We're a small company. So a lot of us wear a lot of hats, but as we're growing, um, we're starting to take off some of those hats and focus mainly on our realm. Your specific job, the the thing you have a title for. Yeah. That's uh, that's cool. And it, but it's a lot of fun having, having your hand in a lot of things, isn't it? it? It is a lot of fun. Sometimes it can be a little hectic. Uh, as you know, juggling a lot of things at once, you know, there's there's tendencies that you could miss something. So there's that anxiety there. But uh, we do a really good job. We got a lot of checks and balances in, in place to make sure that we don't overlook anything. So uh, I want to make sure everybody knows this is a, an American company with American made products. Yes. So all of our products are made in America. We don't outsource anything overseas. But the cool thing is we also try and source all of our raw goods for all of our products from American made mills. Excellent. What are, I'm I'm looking right now and I mean, everything is like the canvas type, um, like you said, soft. What what materials are they made of? It looks like canvas, but it's actually, uh, the majority of our stuff is 1000D Kadura Nylon which is very heavily abrasion resistant. It's water resistant. It can take a licking. Um, the military uses it. A lot of other companies out there use it for their gear. It's uh, washable, so you got that. It doesn't hold water like canvas. Canvas would hold water. Anything with cotton will hold water. Um, nylon, it's made out of a plastic, so it doesn't actually absorb that water. Some of it looks like it's... Um, very complicated. There's, I'm looking at all these vests and all these bags. And oh, this looks like a Swiss Army knife on some of these yeah, things. It's just I mean, like all the little goodies that you can put I on know. there. There's so many little pockets and holders. And I mean, it's just very, um, oh, what word am I looking for? It's Tam- very versatile. Tammy is a storage freak. So she gets really, I am. she loses words when she sees all these places I that know. she can put things. I, too, am a bag explicitive word. Uh-huh. Uh, yes. <laughs> I'm the bag lady. Uh, so bag my fan. favorite my favorite one is the WTF pouch. I think that's so funny. <laughs> like it, it's, it stands for exactly what you think it does. Uh-huh. I mean, does that hook on like your belt or something and you just put whatever you want in there? So that's actually a really fun item. So that item, we use scrap fabric to make that item. Uh-huh. So leftovers from the fabric that we actually cut to make all the other bags and pouches and stuff. When we have leftovers, we'll take that and we'll make those those WTF pouches. And the cool thing is we actually use those to train our new sewers on. Because um, once you can get a straight line down, you can start doing all the curved lines and everything like that. So it's a very simple pro- uh, product to sew, but it's extremely handy. I've got those all over the house, all over the car, all over the Jeep all over the office it's it's just a great little bag to kind of throw in bigger bags to separate and sort and stuff like that totally for like all your like i have all these extra parts for my handheld um walkie or cb radio and i'm like Mm -hmm. where do i put this stuff yeah now it's and or some of my camera gear or whatever so that would be really cool yeah, I actually have one in my toiletry bag, and my toiletry bag is actually one of our gear carry bags. So just to give you guys a, an idea of what we're talking about, it you really need to go over to atlas46.com just to get an idea of the things they have here. But they have listed bags, tool vests, tool belts, clothing, kits, mechanics, firefighter, uh, the add-ons, which I think you guys were just talking about. And, and one that I thought was pretty cool was the magnetic stuff. So there's like yes. a little wrist thing that you can put on. I don't, I don't recall the name, but you can actually stick your screws or nails to that, uh, that wrist mounted thing. So you have them right there. And I believe there's actually one that you can uh, fit on the vest. So as you, you're screwing things, you can actually pull the screw off of your vest and 
get a, a, a new screw to do to do these things. Things that make your job easier. Yes. So those magnetic panels are lifesavers. Uh, I do enjoy the wrist. A lot of our drywall guys like the the, the wrist one. Um, because if you've ever hung sheetrock, you know you need multiple hands. So it's perfect. You can just slap the screws right there, and then you keep going. Um, but the magnetic panels are what I love. Um, because, as you know, when you break down on the trail, you're not breaking down in a flat, dry spot <laughs> on concrete no. asphalt. Yeah. So that doesn't necessarily guarantee you're not going to lose your 10 millimeter but it helps <laughs> oh See, you should make one i was just thinking you need to one. you need to sell something that comes with a 10 millimeter socket <laughs> that would be a great stocking stuffer so we have what's called the baylor socket roll it's a very very handy tool what it is it's, it's a roll and you unroll it and it's got two hook and loop panels with elastic loops and you can fit um all your sockets in there and then it also has a couple of elastic loops in the middle and it comes with a little pouch and i always joke with the guys in the shop and tell them that that pouch is to carry extra 10 millimeter sockets in <laughs> so trevor so you you're know, you're also a jeep owner uh you're not just a a guy that likes uh, all this uh, uh canvas looking stuff correct so, i own a 2008 jku woo-woo. <laughs> and Tony's going to ask you, so I'll just preempt it here. He's going to ask you, what color is your Jeep? My Jeep is a dark blue. Oh, phew. No. I'm sorry, Trevor. That was not the correct answer. <laughs> blue is a good color, as long as it's not red. Blue's not bad. I, I, I like the bright colors, like the yellows, the reds, even the, the fluorescent greens. Those are great Jeep look-at-me colors. Yeah, it's a it's a darker blue. It's the uh, I think the the midnight blue is I believe the uh, yeah the OEM right. I had a truck that color, and people would ask me if it was black. They would kind of squint and look at it and try to tell. Unless it was in some very bright sunlight, you couldn't tell that it was blue. It was kind of a cool color. Do you? How I long have it. you been a Jeep owner? Uh, I've been a Jeep owner probably about since 2010. And you're probably what 24, so. <laughs> Pretty much your whole turn life, the, right? Turn in the big three zero next week. Oh, yeah. Okay. Happy early birthday. You know, it's funny. Um, uh, I think uh, turning 30 uh, was was the most difficult uh, big decade yes. switch for me. Uh, 40? Good. Nah. Wasn't any big deal right. at all. But 30, it was like, you know, I'm, I'm no longer uh, a, a kid, a young adult right. anymore. I mean, of course, that's not the case. You're, you're still a young adult kid at 30. But it just seems that way with the, the numbers that you have in your head. Oh, yeah. Um, do you take your Jeep off-road? I do. Uh, my family, I, I have three beautiful little girls and a beautiful wife. My family loves anything that has to do with the outdoors. So we try oh, and go okay. camping and off-roading and fishing and hiking pretty much every weekend. And we really like to explore and find those spots that, not necessarily no one's been to, but that are, you know, the road's less traveled. Right. The Jeep really helps doing that. So give me so, an idea on these. Uh, you can tell by looking at the site, but I want our listeners that may have uh, uh, may have jobs that are in one of these, uh, these fields that you guys help support. We mentioned firefighters. Uh, what other kind of groups, uh, like electricians, would, would benefit from these things? What are the, uh, what are the groups? electricians carpenters plumbers we have something for everyone and if we don't have something for you or you have a specific tool let us know that's everything we have has basically come from customer demand our uh, owner says a good company is ran not by the employees but by the customers um so we we listen to the customers very actively we we review all Facebook messages, Instagram direct messages, emails, uh, comments on our Facebook posts, basically any medium for the consumer to convey their opinions. We, we actually take that into uh, serious thought when we're developing products and when we're coming out with new versions of products. So just looking here at the about on Atlas 46, uh, and this might give you guys a, a good heads up of what, what you're looking at here. 
Uh, for nearly 40 years, Atlas 46 founder and owner John Carver oversaw the daily operations of a company that was the world leader in the production of the top quality equipment products for military, homeland security, and law enforcement agencies. Uh, John Carver and his mother, Loren Piles, uh, began operation in the basement of St. Louis, uh, Missouri home in 1974. So this, this gives you an idea that, that these items are, are designed and built for the, the people that are having to make, uh, really having to depend on this stuff to operate on a day-to-day basis. Yes. So uh, that, that prior company was based on the people that their lives and other people's lives depended on the gear they were using. And we've carried that over into this new company. Um, so everybody's hears, you know, Oh, Atlas is only four years old. You guys can't be that experienced in the field. We have, uh, designers, sewers and other people at Atlas that are from that previous company that just have a wealth of knowledge, a wealth of experience. Um, our, our design team, probably has well over 60 plus years of experience between the five of them in soft good design and that military-esque dependability that you require. And we're so confident that we are producing good gear that we back all of our gear with a lifetime guarantee on the construction of it. That's great. And also, too, I'd, I'd like to mention for our ham uh, radio operator listeners out there, you know, uh, police, fire, uh, and all those folks have radios as well. So, uh, of course, Atlas 46 has some uh, some soft gear for uh, uh, re- like a radio holster and a radio strap uh, that you can uh, uh, wear across your shoulder uh, to uh, put your mic or your uh, handy talkie on. So I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. So uh, we actually just released that today. So that's a brand new item. It does say new <laughs> on the it, site. It, it, it's brand new. That got released, I believe, t- today at about, I'm sorry, not today, last night at about four o'clock. <laughs> um, but all day today, that's all I was doing was going through and making sure there was no glitches in the system. We've already had lots of orders placed for those. Um it's it's a really fun product. We we've used a lot of local firefighters and paramedics and EMTs to help us develop that product uh, because it was specifically designed for them. I actually do have a Jeeper in St. Louis that has purchased it to use for exactly what you said. They have the portable uh, ham radio, not the uh, in car mounted one. Right, it's a handy talkie, is what the what the hams yep. call it. So. When I was out on the trails last weekend, um, one of the Jeeps broke down, which I will get into later in my Wrangler talk, but um, just on your site, I see your Dragoon multi-purpose mat. Is that, did I say it right? You Dragoon. did. Dragoon. Um, this would be a perfect item to take with you on the trails because so many times we're out there in the dirt and the mud and the wet. This is like a mat that you can lay on underneath your Jeep, and it has little um, areas where you can store your, your tools. So I, I, that would be a perfect gift for the Jeeper in your family. Yep. So that is one of my favorite off-road items that we have, uh, just because you can use it completely laid out. It looks very similar to one of those uh, camping pads that you lay down underneath mm-hmm. your sleeping bag. Um, right. But the cool thing is you can use it folded up and just as like a kneeling pad or a sitting pad if you guys take a break and take lunch. And there's really, you know, you know, you, you want to get out of the Jeep, stretch your legs, but, you know, you want to sit on a rock or something. You can use it as a nice little rear end pad so mm-hmm. you're not suffering. But uh, yeah. as you're saying, there's, there's loop panels that you can connect our magnetic panels to. So, like you said, when you break down, you know, you're never on a flat concrete slab out in the middle of the woods. You're always on an incline or in gravel or in mud, snow, whatever. You can lay that down, place your magnetic panel, get your tools out, and you can put your tools on those magnetic panels so they're not rolling down and getting in the mud and stuff like that. And you can keep track of them. So what would you say is your is the, the, the biggest seller or maybe the, the, the one of uh, the biggest sellers that you guys have? Speaking in the off-road community, the biggest seller is our Yorktown tool roll or our KMR, which is the Yorktown mechanics tool roll. 
that's the uh, tool roll. It's got the four generous size zippered pockets on the front, and then you flip it over, and you've got 11 slots for crescent wrenches. And then on the other side, you got seven additional spots for that are perfect for other hand tools. Um, it was actually brought to our attention from a customer that the slots, you can actually fit double crescent wrenches in. So you can carry a full set of metric and a full set of standard, because every now and then you have that Toyota that jumps in line with you when you're out on the, the trails. <laughs> well, so I'm adding I'm <laughs> adding the Yorktown tool roll and that mat to my wish list on my blog right now. In case anyone's listening and they want to buy me a present. Oh, get that uh whipsaw <laughs> dampener bag for your your winch line, Tammy. Oh, of course. <laughs> Tammy doesn't have a winch yet, so we keep giving her a hard time. She's, <laughs> That's on my wish list, she too. Keeps, she keeps saying, well, I'm not going to get stuck, which I, I can't believe she hasn't gotten stuck after saying that several times so, so far. You know, she must have Murphy's wood, Law. At all times. <laughs> yeah. I do. Actually, I do. I carry... Uh, in your purse? I carry... Um, when I was in um, San Francisco, we went to uh, whatever that state park is i can't remember now anyway um they had a piece of driftwood on a keychain so i bought that and it's in my f- the center council front pocket so i carry it with me all the time and i'm knocking on wood constantly so uh trevor tell me uh, this may be be a common sense item but I, I don't really understand it what is the ultimate boot bag what do you, why do you need a bag for your boots now i'm from texas and it, it does make sense kind of because you know you want to always make sure you have an extra pair of boots in case you step in something but uh, what is the what's the idea behind the boot bag? So the idea behind the boot bag is it fits everything from your sneakers to your cowboy boots to your work boots to your ski boots to your motocross boots. So like I was saying earlier, whenever you break down or when you go off road, you're you're gonna get dirty. As mm-hmm. hard as you try to avoid the muck and the stuff like that, you're probably gonna get dirty. Uh, it's just it's a perfect bag to Throw your your dirty boots in. So if you're one of those neat freaks and you you want your interior to stay spotless, you never wheel without your your doors, you never wheel with your windows down. Oh, this is Tammy. This is you. You need to pay attention to this. Oh, (laughs) hush. So when you you get out and you you get your boots all dirty and you want to keep your interior nice and clean or you're traveling, working on job sites, going out surveying different projects and your boots get muddy – you can throw them in there. It's going to keep your the rest of your gear that's in your bag clean or your interior clean. Or if you have those those nice expensive motocross boots that you don't want to get all dinged up or your snowboard boots or your ski boots, uh, you can use them for that. You know, you guys just have a wide variety of stuff here. I mean, there's so many things. And I, I can't believe looking at all these items that you guys have only been around for, for four years. This must be that 40 years of uh, prior company work that you guys, uh, that the owner had an idea of what needed to be put together. Because I can't believe you guys have this many items in just that short of time. Oh, yeah. So for a while there, for probably the, the second and third third year we were probably releasing a new item at least once a week uh we we've we've kind of established ourselves in the marketplace and we we've gotten a foothold to where we're we're going towards a more releasing one to two products per quarter (laughs) something that's Um, uh, easier to keep up with i'm sure (laughs) we've gotten ahead of the game and that was kind of our goal to where we weren't kind of scrambling last minute to get the to get the designs right, to get production up to speed on the new products. Because, I mean, we do produce everything we, we make. We design, we cut, we sew, we ship. Uh, so it's not just coming up with an idea, sending it off to some, some other manufacturer to do it. We've got to make sure the design is clearly able to be sewn with our sewers on the sew floor. Right. So we don't want to make something that's too complicated that's going to take too much time to make to where there that we just have to jack up the prices you know we want to offer a, a fair affordable price to our consumers yet still make money now what kind of lead time do you guys have uh, you know everybody's used to the amazon thing where they they get it two days before they actually order it so uh what kind of lead time on on these items are they do you have a lot of stuff in stock that gets shipped out the same day uh so, weeks so and days i mean what, what are we looking at 
there's there's products that that we can ship out the same day that are just not top sellers but some of our top sellers it's it's almost two to four weeks um especially right around the holidays oh, we, yeah. we get really yeah. we get really backlogged because a lot of our gear like you said like uh you were saying earlier with the dragoon mat and the Baylor socket roll and the Yorktown it, it, they're they're great stocking stuffers that anything and everything so we we get we do get backlogged on our more popular items right now the more popular items are about two to four weeks we recently just opened up a second manufacturing facility in Hillsboro Illinois to keep up with production and we're That's looking great. to we're looking to open more production facilities in other small towns across across the United States to keep up with that production. Well, that's great. I'm glad to hear you guys are doing so well. I mean, you can you can get a sense just looking at these, and it, this is a difficult thing to actually get across on a website. But you get a sense of this stuff being very high quality, very durable, very. Uh, I, I think it has a lot to do with uh, like the firefighter stuff and the. Uh, you, you just know that stuff has to be good if it's going to be a uh, hold-up uh, day-to-day activity for firefighters. Now, uh, I, I mentioned the ham radio uh, uh, radio type stuff uh, or the ham radio operators that would be interested in, in the things, and that's in the firefighter sec, uh, segment, guys. And they only have a couple items there, but I'm sure you want to have a look at that. And, of course, the tool pouches are, are just wonderful, especially the roll-up because uh, Jeep space is always very limited, and if you can roll something up and stuff it someplace and, of course, tie it down properly – uh, that's all the all the, all the better. So, Trevor, uh, real quick, where can people find out uh, find you guys on uh, social media and, of course, uh, Atlas Forty Six dot com? We've already mentioned, but we'll uh, mention that again real quick. But uh, where can they can see these things? Uh, maybe on social media, maybe see uh, uh, what you guys are doing on Instagram and Facebook. Uh, on Instagram, you can find us at at, at Atlas Forty Six Gear. Um, some guy already had Atlas 46. I don't know what he does, but Bad he posts bastard. Stuff. <laughs> but uh, on Facebook, you can find us just at Atlas 46. Um, anytime we're releasing something new, anytime we've got new information, we are constantly posting. We love user generated content. So throughout the day, we're scrolling through Instagram and Facebook and Pinterest and finding people that are posting us and tag- tagging us and sharing their pictures so if you have our gear and you want to get shared on our social medias just tag us we'll find it we will repost it um like i said we love seeing the consumers using our gear we love we the king of hammers last year uh we had a lot of people posting about it all these jeeping events we have people uh your your average joe carpenter will will post his gear and we we just love sharing it you don't have to be some big social media influencer if you tag us and it's a just an awesome picture we will share it so is it uh, atlas 46 gear on instagram yes all right great uh found that found you guys and uh the jeep talk show is now following you so, and that's what you guys should do. Go over to uh, the, the social media things and uh, uh, look up Atlas 46. And, of course, go to their website, atlas46.com. It's really cool. I mean, <laughs> there's a lot of – you just see things there that just as an individual that, you know, you're not in the business of carpentry or uh, electrician or something, but you'd still like to have it, you know, just on those – just, I guess, just so you can walk around the house. Yeah, I got to fix something today. It's uh, This is going to be some tough stuff I'm doing, so I better get my tool belt on. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, you know, Trevor, it seems like I remember seeing something, uh, some sort of deal where you guys uh, have a, like a 46-day trial or something uh, on, on these uh, very nice items. Yeah. So on all of our items, we have a 46-day trial period. So the trial period starts from the day you pretty much receive it to 46 days out, so a month and a half plus a day, to test it, beat it to crap, make sure it's exactly what you want. Cause we want our customers to have the gear that's going to make their job, their life, their hobbies, anything easier. We will take it back in any condition. As long as it doesn't look like you purposely destroyed it. We actually have a video in our facts page. That was a really fun video to shoot. Um, I always tell customers, as long as it doesn't look like you cut it in half, lit it on fire or shot it, we will take it back. And we actually took some of our product out and lit it on fire cut it in half <laughs> threw axes at it and shot it that was, that was the, most, that was the f- most fun video that i think we've ever done um 
other than the ones where I actually get to go out and wheel. Uh, but like I said, 46 days, you purchase the gear. It's just not everything you wanted and more. You call us, you contact our customer service. We work with you. We will pay for you to ship it back to us and we will send you either a full refund or give you that credit to what you want. That's great. So, so basically, uh, you, it's like the, like to get the, the tool thing at your, at your local auto parts place. You go, you pay them for the tool. And if you want to keep it, you keep it and it's yours. And if you don't, you take it back and you get full credit. Correct. Excellent. I mean, everybody understands that. That's a great deal. Uh, and so if you have any doubts about this, uh, this equipment that maybe it's not right for you, maybe you don't want to, you know, spend a couple hundred bucks for this really cool looking thing that's, uh, that's online and you, you can't touch it and feel it. Well, here now you can touch it and feel it for 46 days. That's a lot of touchy feely, Trevor. It's a lot of touchy <laughs> All right, Trevor, thanks a lot being, for being with us uh, tonight, and uh, we'll be looking forward to uh, uh, seeing more from you guys here in the future. Oh, and I forgot, we have, uh, have a little something-something for our listeners, don't we? We do. So we are offering a 10% discount code to all of our listeners, or all of your listeners. I'm saying our listeners. like I'm part That's of the fine. It, they're listening to you right now, I guarantee you, <laughs> yeah. with, the, with the discount code. <laughs> so the discount code is JTS. 2019 uh that'll get you 10 percent off of any purchase on the website and make sure you tell us that you in the comment section that you heard us on jeep talk show yeah we, we'd like to like for you to uh, let them know about that as well so uh don't forget you get a little 10 percent off discount by going uh using jts 2019 there at uh, atlas46.com trevor thanks again no problem guys thanks for having me well, big thanks again to Trevor Smith from Atlas46.com for uh, taking the time to talk about all their cool gear. And if you haven't checked out the Atlas46 website yet, oh my goodness, you are missing out. R- lots of really cool gear there. And right now, a JTS2019 is your 10% off discount code. That's right. At Atlas46.com, when it's time to check out, enter JTS2019 for 10% off your purchase for a limited time. Hey, do you have an idea for a guest? Do you work in the off-road industry yourself or know somebody who does? Maybe you would like to be a guest on the Jeep Talk Show to tell your own Jeep story. Just go to jeeptalkshow.com slash contact right now and share your idea for our next great guest. Who knows? We just might have you on the show one day. Hey, coming up next week, Eddie Corsino uh, is going to be talking to us about Death Wobble. I hope he's just going to talk about it and not give it uh, to us. (laughs) Yeah, really. (laughs) Yikes. From the mind of Nikki G. Hey, this is Nikki G. And uh, spring is here, and the weather finally broke in North Carolina. And I uh, just spent the day out in the yard with uh, Wendy and Sir Craps a lot. Wendy was throwing a frisbee at us. And uh, for the life of me, I couldn't figure out why the frisbee was getting bigger. And then it hit me. <laughs> but that's not why I'm calling. Calling because I finally got to the bottom of the mystery of Tammy's missing D-ring. Uh, Tony, Tammy, you're both right in a way. Uh, the D-ring did fall off, but only after the thieves stole the very valuable center pin. All right, boys and girls, I'll uh, chat to you later. You have a good one. Bye. I told you. <laughs> then it hit me. Uh, I think Nikki G's run, yeah. I think Nikki G's trying to run for politics. <laughs> yeah, he is. Definitely. You must have needed this every day. I need it. It's the Deep Talk Show's must-have stuff pick of the week for your Jeep. And this week we've got something that's really cool, not specifically for your Jeep, but it's definitely Jeep related and it's, well, it could be for your desk or for your headboard or uh, for the bookshelf, whatever. This is a wooden mechanical 3D model of a Jeep Willys. Is this, the, just, Ma- is this the Mahindra? Is this that thing that they're no. selling? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, this is not the oh. Jeep, the wannabe Jeep. This is an, this is an actual model of an oh, actual okay. Willys Jeep. Now, there's no glue required to assemble this thing. There are over 570 parts that come with this kit. The approximate time to assemble this whole thing is a good 12 hours. Wow. Not recommended for children under 14. There is a lot of very small parts 
and a lot of detail that goes into this. The model is started with a special key. It has a removable shovel, an axe, and a fuel canister, has independent suspension, four-wheel drive, real four-wheel drive, and travels about two feet under its own power. This thing is actually, it, it's, it's, I don't think it would fit in a shoebox. This isn't tiny. This is actually fairly large sized, and I wouldn't go so far as to call this a toy because I would imagine it's also fairly delicate. But this thing is about as cool of a Jeep oh, model it as it comes because it's 100% wood. And the detail that goes into this, all of the little aesthetics and everything else that go into this, I mean, just you could look at this thing for an hour and probably not see the same thing twice. Uh, it's just an amazing little uh, model. I'm going to pick one up myself. The, there's a whole series of these things. There's only one Jeep, though, but there's a bunch of other models in, in the series and stuff that are also very cool and, and even more intricate. Now, the kit itself is $89, uh, $88.99, and it comes with free shipping, but trust me, you get every cent that you pay for out of this thing. This is an amazing little piece of machinery, and uh, I think any Jeep enthusiast should have one on their table or desk or shelf or whatever. <laughs> well, now that you must have one of these wooden mechanical Jeep Willys models uh, for your very own, we'll make it easy for you. Just go to jeeptalkshow.com, look for the link in the show notes for episode 380, and uh, you can have one for yourself. Hey, Jeep Talk Show, it's Nate. I had a comment or two on your most recent show. You guys are talking about Tammy's brakes and how her rear brakes wore out faster than her front brakes. Um, I know on the TJ with four-wheel disc brakes, the rear pads are much smaller than the front pads, and that's probably why they wore out faster. I assume the JK is the same way. Uh, so that's probably why uh, those wore out before the front did. I would expect them to wear out around the same time, though. That's how mine seemed to wear. I did have an event I was hoping you guys could mention on the air. It's for later in April on the 28th. Uh, AOAA is planting a bunch of trees. They have a 1,000 trees they want to plant within the park. I don't know where they're doing it, because uh, there's already lots of trees there, but uh, this new pipeline just went in. I wonder if that's where they're doing it, but whatever. Uh, you can register for it for free, of course, through Off-Road Consulting. Tony, I'll send you a link. I hope you'll uh, you'll be kind enough to share it in the show notes. And just for the record, my real name is not Brian. Thanks. I think that's, a, that's the trick, though, is that you do an event where you're planting a lot of trees in an area where there's a lot of trees. And everybody just assumes that you planted the trees. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Now, it's funny is that n both Nate and uh, one of our other callers, the caller that uh, called to say thanks and uh, about the event. Now, he was talking about an event that I'm actually going to be talking about tonight in Wheeling Wear. And Nate was talking about an event that I already have in Wheeling Wear. Now, you might think that, well, that's just already pre-planned and everything. No, I don't hear the voicemails while the show is being written and stuff. I don't hear the, the voicemails until the actual, you know, show night. Just like everybody uh, else. Yeah, here? yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm here. First time yeah. on the show. <laughs> I'm hearing the voicemail for the first time, just like you. So this is complete coincidence that we're going to be talking about the same two events in Wheeling Wear that two of our callers called in about. So that's kind of a, a neat quinky dink. Yeah, yeah. It's, it, it doesn't hurt to reinforce something. And that Wheeling Wear is coming up in a few minutes after Campfire Side Chat. Well, I've got a real quick announcement, uh, and I'm going to use a movie quote uh, that I'm probably going to butcher uh, to to sort of convey this. The more I try to get out, the more they drag me back in. Now, I said uh, a couple few years ago that I'm basically more or less retired from my side gig of DJing after 20-some-odd years of, of doing it. I was a, a DJ and an MC uh, for countless events, uh, both corporate and private. Uh, and uh, got a lot of time behind the mic and, and the turntables and, and all that sort of stuff. Um, thought that I could, you know, sort of move on from all of that, but, uh, but no, uh, there are some, uh, some Jeep clubs in Oregon that are having none of that, and uh, at the very least, I'm going to be emceeing two events. Uh, it's looking like possibly a third, but I'm going to be for sure emceeing uh, an MC only. I'm not going to be DJing. I'm not even going to be bringing in <laughs> any gear except for maybe a microphone um, for this year's Jeep Summer Jam in Salem, Oregon. So I'll be looking forward to that. And I'll be telling you guys some details about that and the other events that I'm going to be involved in out here in the Northwest uh, as we get a little closer to that. Things don't really get going until uh, May at the earliest out here. Um, and then we've only got a few months when things wrap up and then it's back to winter. So, yeah. 
Well, I was at the garage, Adrenaline Off-Road, yesterday for six hours. Wow. Learning. I know. It, it took so long because I asked so many questions, and he would stop <laughs> and explain everything to me. But we replaced my radiator. And you say when, we, we took, when you say we, who, who are we I talking helped. about? She has a mouse in her pocket. <laughs> oh, oh, I went to Adrenaline Off-Road, um, where Jeff... Um, runs the place and he has two twins who are jeepers they went to this she goes this, to look uh, at the twins we all know yeah. she goes well, to apparently look. The they bearded, all have the, they all have the patience of a saint to deal with you I don't know. oh i know he I, I think i kind of reminded him of his girlfriend and his mom because i was i said if i get annoying just tell me to shut up so you can work but no he was great daniel um he replaced my uh, radiator. I helped. I did some bolts and I moved stuff. And anyway, it was really, I love being able to go there because I can be right there in the hood of my Jeep, underneath my Jeep. I could be right there with them. That's um, rare, we, by the way. Yeah. I, I hope you understand that. Anybody else listening, that what Tammy is experiencing is not common at all. Uh, so no. your insurance you're, issues. You're definitely uh, getting the VIP treatment. Also, there. although they say insurance issues, it could just be they don't want to be annoyed and slowed down by customers. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly, by three hours. It's normally a three-hour job. But um, when we pulled that radiator out, and there are pictures on my YouTube or on my um Facebook page, you could see where the leaks are on the sides yeah, because there was, leaks. yes, there was, and the ironic thing is um, another black Jeep, and maybe it's a black Jeep thing, I don't know, um, was there getting something done, and they always do the multi-point inspection while they're fixing the Jeeps, and that Jeep had the exact same, um, those, the coolant spots underneath where you get underneath your Jeep and you look at the radiator, the bottom of the radiator on the driver's side, that's where you see the leaks. You see the little, like my coolant is, there's a debate on what color it is. I think it's pink. People say it's purple, but depending on what light you look in it. Anyway, you can see the coolant sitting there dried up from the leaks. Um, so anyway, we replaced it with another OEM because I could have done an aftermarket, but some people say it's just not as good. And Jeff believes that sometimes putting aftermarket parts in your engine just don't work as good because, you know, Jeep spends billions of dollars putting this together. And I know from experience getting aftermarket headlights, it doesn't always fit together the same. So I went with the OEM radiator. So it's all good, knock on wood. Everything's good so far. So maybe in another 40,000 miles, I'll have to replace it. We'll see. The other thing I want to point out that is so, so important. When you're off-roading, your Jeep gets muddy. Always make sure you clean the mud off of everywhere because you need to see yeah. if your Jeep is leaking anywhere. And what I found um, after this weekend, my front diff is leaking. Uh-oh. Because I was stupid and decided I replaced the rear diff cover when I swapped them and I did it myself. It's holding strong. I'm using the lube blockers. Well, I was being lazy. Don't be lazy, people. Um, when I went to was going to the Jeep dealer to get my free oil changes, I brought my diff cover and I said, hey, could you guys just put this on for me? Because I was being lazy. Well, they didn't use the bolts that were supplied with it. Somebody Aww. on my Facebook page said it looks like they used license plate. It's the uh, the Allen wrench bolts instead oh, like of the one. Button, button head cap screws probably with an Allen yes. head. Yes. So while I was at the shop, I noticed it. And um, so I got an Allen wrench. They were all loose. The oh, ones geez. in my rear are not loose. So this weekend, I'm... Jeff said I could probably just fill it up, but I was in water this weekend, so I don't want to take that chance of water being in that diff. So I will. I called Riddler, Jake at Riddler. He's um, the son of the owner. He's now a co-owner. He was amazing. He's going to ship me out some some bolts for free, um, but he also suggested if I want to do it this weekend because it won't get here in time, I can go, and he gave me the exact um, kind of bolts that I need. And I'm going to just totally take it out, clean it, and put new gear oil in it. 
and use the correct bolts. Yeah, That's what you idea. should always use what the manufacturer gives you. Yep, yep, so, yep. Now, Tammy, I know that this doesn't fit your narrative, but you didn't provide all the information on your radiator issue. Oh, I didn't? What did I forget? Uh, the the D-ring that they found in there that actually caused oh. <laughs> the leak. Yes. It bounced <laughs> and, back. And you, and right you were just uh -huh, saying, no. well, isn't this a coinky dink? I, I, no. this, now, this isn't the one I lost. I know what you're thinking, but <laughs> I've, it, I've got a replacement. The universe took away. The universe provides. Yep. By the way, I did not lose a purple D ring. No one has stolen my purple D rings yet. It's because they're purple. Oh yeah. The one that the one that was stolen was the regular silver. They don't want any uh, trouble from Samuel L. Jackson, so they yeah. uh, they leave those alone. Oh, and I Ned. forgot to mention when I was up at the trail ride, I got to see Nate. He was on the same. Um, he was in the same group or the same event, but he guided a different group, which it sounds like they had a lot of fun too. Um, and the ammo can comment at the beginning of the show, I had, remember my ammo can carriers and I didn't like the noise of them, so I got the canvas bags. Well, I decided to give the ammo cans to Nate and they were, I spray painted them purple, Aww. but obviously I didn't spray paint the bottom. So Nate is an ammo can lover. That's where he keeps all his stuff. So I was being a nice jeeper and giving him my ammo cans well nice yeah, except for the nice waiver picture. that you made him sign not to <laughs> not to re repaint them oh yeah <laughs> yes to have i should have i should have autographed them <laughs> oh, there you go now a great picture on social media i saw this week uh with uh with you handing those over and and him him yeah. holding them up holding the bottoms up big, big grin on his face uh, right that was fun that was good times well, do you want to join in on the Campfire Side Chat? We'd sure love to have you here with us. Go to jeeptalkshow.com slash contact and find out all the ways you can reach out to us and join in on the fun. Now let's get to some events from around the world and maybe even in your neck of the woods. Don't forget to let us know about an event that you are planning or are involved in. Just go to jeeptalkshow.com slash contact, click and fill out our wheeling wear form. The information comes to us and we will get it out to the masses. Just remember to try and get that information to us at the very least. A minimum of two weeks in advance. Well, we've got uh, an event. Well, as you already know, we've uh, both these events have kind of more or less already been talked about here in the show. We have Planting Happy Little Trees at the AOAA. It's happening April 28th, the Anthracite Outdoor Adventure Area in Coal Township, Pennsylvania. We have uh, Jeepapalooza, BC happening May 17th through the 19th at Vancouver Island in Courtenay, BC, Canada. Both of these events are really doing some good stuff there going to good uh, good causes and all that sort of stuff of course for more information more events and links on these events or more visit the cheaptalkshow.com website for this episode and get all the information you need that's it for the show for this week my fellow jeepers so remember the best way to help support the show is by getting a friend to subscribe and as always thank you for listening to the world's most downloaded jeep podcast warning Due to the extreme horsepower and torque contained within the Jeep Talk Show, it is advised that smashing the skinny pedal to the floor like you were trying to kill a spider should not be attempted without first implementing properly safety rated safety equipment. Podcasting since 2010.